before known as Lavinia the Oro World. Uh, we as in, in our team, we thought, you know, if the 150th anniversary is coming and in and for that reason we have to, I mean, somehow we had the feeling that we need to prepare ourselves proactively and we did a workshop internally and we looked at the various uh, various trajectories where Oro will need to progress. And part of the mandate of Oro will Town Development Council, there are many sectors where we had to develop. So we looked at from town planning to urban development, urban design to uh, economic development to resource mobilization to everything. Uh, and we also set ourselves realistic targets that can be achieved in the next few years. Um, and developing from there, we we were so lucky as things would uh, come on its own by some grace. Uh, come this uh, May or June, Madam Secretary also joined Oro Will. Uh, and then we also have a now full governing board and we also have an international advisory council. All this were kind of keeping our progress slow, halted, because we did not have these bodies in place working for some years. Even, this, even the chairman was not in place for uh, about a year, if I'm not wrong. Uh, thankfully, all these things have come at a rightful moment uh, on the occasion of the 150th anniversary of Sherville Law. And now our idea is that can we infuse some, some fresh energy into the idea of progress of Oroville, which we have all been dreaming for 53 years now. And that's, uh, that's where we started working from. And we looked at what are the, shall we, shall we first begin with the projects that are halted, that are long pending. And that's where we began our work. So, yeah, if it is, Joel, is it ready? Two minutes. So, um, in two minutes, when things are ready, I would invite Sri Vatsa to come and make a presentation of, uh, you know, the, the presentation that we have been making for last uh, almost a year now, since January. Uh, first we made it to the community, and we had had many conversations within the community with different different working groups. We also had the same presentation with the foundation. In fact, this is a presentation upon which all the actions are which are being taken right now are began from this presentation. Uh, you, will, you will notice that on this presentation, we, we have mentioned uh, that we need to look at the galaxy, the form of galaxy in some form, how do we get that into place? Uh, right now, if you look at the plan of Oracle, it's, it's half of the development. It's, it's being developed as one wished initially, uh, wherever they had access to and then whatever they thought they just developed. Uh, we are trying to kind of put things, I mean, it's, it's literally setting our house in order right now. And that's, that has caused a bit of churning, we all are aware of it, we all are conscious of it. But we all are also aware that we, this is an important step for us to move forward. So I would request you to look at this presentation from that point of view. The, the purpose of inviting you all is also an effort to reach out beyond Oroville. We also believe that Oroville is not only meant to be developed by Orovillians. It's, it's, it's a call for all the, uh, all the goodwill of the world to come and contribute, to help in this effort. And we felt being this extended family, you, are the, you should be the first one to be invited and share what we are doing. And, and, and also hear from you what is that you think that how we should proceed. And let's have a dialogue. The idea is to have, this is not just one time effort, the idea is to see how you can contribute and how we can have a conversation. A conversation about constant progress of all work. How many minutes more? <laughs> we like We go. You can be.
Lakshya is still 
leave the member of the Havaniya Devar open. But anyway, I think it's an honor for us to meet you all today, especially in this auspicious year. And before we start, I just want to recollect because it's not something, maybe most of you might be knowing it, but this is a way of, you know, very gratefully acknowledging it. Like, you know, this is something I think we should do. Because Lavanya Dwarval as an institution or organization was created by Mother herself for the specific purpose of creating the town. Now this is something that I think we should not forget and especially my team, we are very grateful for that. And with that note, like you know, and with this auspicious chanting which we started, we just wanted to give you a presentation about how to go about building the the city of Auroville, the, 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 the city of Dawn. Now this is something which has been kind of, uh, you know, the biggest question I would say, you know, for many of us in Auroville. And uh, till Roger was there, that was a different story. And after that, like, you know, when somebody like me or even Toby or somebody had to step in and try to move things forward was a really big challenge for us. Now there were certain things like you know we didn't know how to go and reach out to people. On what basis do we reach out? What are we trying to do? Like you know, there was a sense of uh, clarity which we saw was really required to take things and reach it out. And we are lucky that you know probably during the COVID because of this time of having a certain silence, we utilize the time to create a workshop within us. We wanted to define and to give a certain sense of purpose and clarity as to how to move forward. I think to move forward in building the city of Dawn, we realized like, you no, know, first we should be clear what we are doing. Lavan and the Auroville, what we are doing. That is something that, you know, we wanted to be clear among ourselves, with my team, with the people in, uh, in the office. So with that, we created a workshop and we came with a set of uh, interesting outputs which uh, I am very pleased to share with you today and I also hope that this this clarity would also resonate with all of you to make sure like you know that we could collectively move forward and this being the 150th anniversary of Sri Aurobindo I think it's like you know, it's the right time probably like no I don't think so we should uh, wait anymore I think the world is calling us and also from the point of being in Lavinia for the last two and a half years we could also see what are the kind of external forces which are also happening, you know, the outside developments and all these things. So we no more have the time to really like, you know, sit and debate about what it is. I think it's really the time to really move forward. And with that, I would like to start my presentation. So we call it a strategic approach to implement the, the Galaxy plan. So uh, it was very strategic, of course. Uh, so can we go to the next slide, please? Is there someone? Oh, okay, you're okay. So we wanted to identify what is the drive like? Now, what are we doing in Lavin here? Like, now, is it just like we are coming? Is it a nine to five job? We are just like, now because 50 years has passed by, do we need to spend another five, 10 years? No, but we actually wanted to get a drive for us. It's like, no, what exactly? I really wanted to, like, no, take it through a thick skull for us in the office, and we said, like, no, let's. What is it like? No, let's resonate with it. And we wanted, okay, the purpose of Auroville is to realize human unity, and this is something like, no, which we took from what the mother, you know, initially started from our essence. If I have to recollect, no, can you go here? Yeah. There should be somewhere on earth a place which no nation could claim as its own where all human beings of goodwill could live freely as citizens of the world, a place of peace, concord and harmony. Again, like, you know, I'm very grateful, like, you know, that it's happening in this place for whatever reasons and uh, me being part of this land over here, uh, I think it's this, this the sense of infinite gratitude, like, you know, somewhere in this whole world where it could be in any place, probably in the Silicon Valley or whatever it is, but, like, you know, somewhere, like, you know, mother thought that this would be the right place. And where people from all over the world could come and stay together and work something. So this is something like, you know, the vision is so great that sometimes like, you know, you get, sometimes you ask ourselves, do we, did we really understand what, what the, the, the depth of what it is? Did we really understand like, you no, know, the scope of it is? I mean, this is such a huge task. I don't think so, like, you know, it's like inventing E is equal to MC square. Before Einstein, there was no E is equal to MC square. Now what we are trying to do is inventing a formula, something like, you know, which will, which will set the whole human race 
into a completely new path. Now, this is the scale with which actually we are trying to do something. And this is something we really wanted to get into our skull. Next. And then, as most of you must be knowing, or all of you must be knowing, the sketch where Roger was like, you know, trying to come up with different concepts and other things, and then Mother gave the sketch of like, you know, having these kind of four petals, like, you know, these four zones, and with the peace zone at the center. So, it's for us, it's very clear that Mother is the one. Like, you know, she is actually the, the architect, of course. Like, you know, Roger was the perfect tool to make it you know, uh, manifest physically into, into model, into sketches. And that was also very important for us. So, which means for us, the mother is the client. For us, mother is the person for whom we are here for. It is for the mother we are actually working. And this concept which in the future was named as Galaxy because it resonated something like Galaxy. Uh, for me, every day when I look at this Galaxy as an architect, like, you know, I feel like, wow, there's so many new layers which are like, you know, revealed in it. Which, are, like, you know, it's, it's, it's so interesting. And in the last one year, we had this opportunity also to connect with some of the best minds in that world. And everybody comes, nobody says, look, this is something of the past of 1960. Everybody says, wow, this is so contemporary, this is so futuristic. And uh, it's so timeless, which means for us, like, no, it's not something that it's, it's set in an ism or it's set in a period. But with whatever generation, whatever, uh, you know, the new technology arrives and everybody appreciates and says, yes, I could find a layer in it. I think it perfectly fits into it. I think this is something which is very unique in terms of design or something. I don't see, I haven't seen anything which is as timeless as this. This is purely from a practical point of view of me being an architect. And not only did she give this, we all know she gave the charter and she gave us uh, the galaxy. And it's also very important to understand, like, to do this, this whole purpose of what Aurobel, the charter, she did not just start to stop the charter. Of course, the, the real tool was to build the town and to, like, you know, really participate and be in the town and to evolve. Probably that's, that's the most important essence in terms of physical, physically manifesting. I see that's something like the, the tool, you know, the physical tool which was given to us. And then, as you all know, when the, the government came into picture, the act was passed. And then, based on that, the master plan was created. So, for us, it's just a timeline, you know, the spiral, what we said, you know, from 1930 to 47. It's, it's been, we, we think it's kind of stagnating, but actually, if you see, it has been revealing itself to us over the period of years. Probably, like, you know, we were not fast enough to really grasp it. But I think whenever we rose and we chose to listen to it, things started revealing in it. So, it's not something which has been static. This, this whole thought process, this whole movement actually has been like, you know, moving on and on and on. And somewhere like, you know, it has been, I personally feel it's been moving in the right direction. Probably it's the people like, you know, which actually, where we need to really come together and to make it happen. So, we thought what should be the direction. We took these five, uh, inspired by the charter. So what we said is for Lavanya the world, what do we do? We build the galaxy for humanity as a whole. Now, this was a very important point which we said to ourselves. And second is progress through spiritual and material research for unending education. And for something which is as timeless as this, definitely education, knowledge is the very basis with which we can move forward. There is no much better tool than to really let like, no start working on it. Integrate and bridge to develop the universal township. Integration, because this beautiful plan is a plan of harmony. It talks about harmony, about all the different divisions we find in the world. Between greenery and development, between technology and humanness, between like, you know, the, the pedestrian ways and the, the mobility. You, you name it, all the diversities, all these things have been beautifully captured here and has been beautifully balanced over here. So, this integration is something which is already there and the, the most important thing for me is the answer is already there. It's just like, you know, we, are, we have to re-engineer it. We just don't know the questions. We were probably not seeking the right questions. That's how we were looking at it. So, for us to integrate and bridge is very important. And the fourth is take advantage of discoveries to boldly spring towards the future. This is also a really, really important point because something like this which is timeless we need to look at all kinds of discoveries. 
and this we should not shy away from this is something also which is very part particularly very dear to me and collaborate and become a collective institution for constant progress also we would like to reach out to anybody and everybody all over the world it could be institution it could be uh, government departments it could be individuals it could be ngos anybody with good will anybody with good will who are looking at humanity as a whole we are most uh, we are really happy to really like no work with them i think we are just like squirrels in ramayana in that case we are more than happy to open our doors for them so these are the five basic principles i would say with which we said look let's as a team let's start moving forward and what what we did is already we were given something called the office order we have something called the standing order and the standing order mentions 10 different uh, sectors into which we are supposed to put our uh, focus into so if you see look into the 10 first is town planning physical infrastructure urban design i mean town planning you all must be knowing it's about the planning the, the city the town whatever you call it it also has a lot of legal uh, aspect to it a uh, physical infrastructure of course like you know your electrical water and those kind of things urban design why urban design is very important for something like orville is see it's it's a very form based town we are actually doing it the other way like how uh, it happens in the world if you take pondicherry pondicherry has started maybe as a as a form like you know you have the french town tamil town but over the period of time like it turns into urban sprawl so what happens is like you no know, you focus more on the urban planning but here we are also looking at the experience of that form what the, what the form gives us experience in terms for a mentality for for a vital for everything like you no know? so uh, the urban form of it is very important and that fabric should not be destroyed that is that is some a very unique part of our social infrastructure social infrastructure if you see is Uh, the percentage is much higher for a concept like orville you could see like you know, we have solar kitchens community kitchens like you no know, many of these things are supposed to be like you no know, more community oriented so the percentage of social infrastructure over here is much higher which also means you have lot of scope to really like you no know, see and work how we could really work on the social infrastructure part applied research applied research i hope all of you must be well aware uh, orville needs quite a lot of research to really like you no know, manifest this down green zones or will has 50% of its area even in the city area roughly like you no know, where it is left open for green areas apart from the green belt what we have implementation monitoring all these things are fine like you no know, these these concepts all these things can be worked out but ideally like you no know, we have to start moving forward you no know, we need to implement it and something of this scale we need to have a really uh, an implementation team which is of a very high quality of uh, following some of the best practice in the world communication again communication is a, is a very important task because when you are looking at communicating with people from 50 60 countries or people from all over the world when you are reaching out to people from all over the world language like you no know, how we present it when do we present it why do we present it all these things becomes important and then we have economic development economy is also very unique in norway it's not like you no know, something capitalistic driven or something else we have we have to really work on a completely new set of an economic model to really make our will happen resource mobilization of course for all these things we need funds we need manpower we need uh, technology we need all the resources in the world to really make it happen so these are the 10 main sectors which were given to us to uh, start focusing on so even in this 10 sectors actually if you see what we did is we divided it into two uh, uh, we had a set a, a goal for each of it like if you see for town planning what we thought is in incentivize participatory planning to get statutory status for all of it so what we did is we, we we thought of breaking it into two one is like no we would be focusing on getting a statutory status the second thing is to be focusing on getting a phase wise participatory plan now statutory status now this is something which is very important for orbel uh, especially a town like orbel because planning is a state subject just like law and order or anything is and we have to have a certain recognition or certain understanding with the governance of the state and there are certain mechanisms and norms to get it done and unfortunately orbel 
till now we still haven't really got this recognition and if we get this recognition it's a very i'm not saying like you know we are going to completely move on the system but it's we are respectfully we will be in a much better way engaged with the state government and with the other governance systems which are currently in place phase wise participatory plan now what we mean by participatory planning over here is not to ask okay what do you want here what do you want no that's not how we see we see like you know as orobillions who are following the charter the orobillions job is to participate in building the town which means like you no know, you either do it physically or you ensure like you no know, you contribute in terms of whatever it is and you try to push the bar for what the galaxy aims you know this is what what we over here means participatory plan and the second thing is when we come to physical infrastructure galaxy model is a life centric ecosystem to build a boldly spring towards the future now what we are looking in this is again two things one the responsible resource utilization which means like you no know, we are not aiming for something where everybody can have a jacuzzi and sauna and like you no know, live a life you no know, that's not the, the 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 resources or the infrastructure is not supposed to be meant for that so how do we respectfully utilize the resources and this is a very important part of it the infrastructure part whether it could be water electricity whatever it could be and second is integrated project and infrastructure development approach so how do we have an integrated project Uh, if you have to make it in a let's say mathram mandir see mathram mandir is something like where you you had to have an integrated approach to get certain things done and and this is a bigger scale i would say of something of that so you need to have a very integrated approach to move forward and the third is when we talk about urban design encourage community participation and institutional partnership to integrate the bio region into the galaxy so in this we are working on the detailed development plans now what is detailed development plans you have a concept it's like if I, as an architect it's easy for me to explain to you as an example a residence if you want to build a house you go to an architect an architect will give you a sketch and say look this is how it will look do you like it maybe we say yes or no and then like no then we actually do a certain style or certain 3d or a hand sketch or whatever it is now this is taken but then what you do is you start working out the details where the electrical how the how the the wall has to be built what are the stages it has to be built all these things are the detailed development plans so the detailed development plans will help us to really effectively move forward in actually implementing the town and getting things done and integrating galaxy and the bio region again we are looking at a way like i said the galaxy itself is stands for harmony and it has the capacity to harmonize and it is a harmonizing tool so we are just not looking at how we could just build a galaxy where we end up like a kind of a very uh, yeah community which is very posh or something no but we have to ensure that you know how do we really respectfully uh, merge with the bio region this is a very important aspect of it and fourth encourage self realization as a means of social welfare for spiritual and material research this is for the social infrastructure part where we look at creating opportunities for coming together and facilitate learning programs see building a city itself is a is an opportunity it's it's a economic driver like you know if you see in olden days like you know the, the kings used to build temples and towns and other things during famines and other things so a city itself is a huge project it creates so much of economy and other things so what we are looking at is how the the, the opportunities have there are a lot of opportunities in even building this town and how do we channel it in a proper way and create opportunities of a certain high caliber and standard and through that which also means we need to also have a certain learning process in place create facilitate learning programs fourth is create a knowledge hub and facilitate research for sustainable and aesthetic expression so we are looking at value based experiments and programs and types if you look into the Uh, the next one design resilient ecosystem and to organize and develop animal spaces this is for the green spaces because one is to build the buildings but the other thing is like you no know, orville has a beautiful way of merging the ecosystem merging the green areas the open spaces so we call these as unbuilt spaces these unbuilt spaces could be immediately manifested there's nothing like you no know, uh, i mean you could start working on it if we have a certain ddps in place we could actually start looking at how these unbuilt spaces could be created into parks and gardens and like you know whatever it is adaptive and responsive this process community awareness and motivation so this is for experimental learning through cordial relations with working groups for constant progress 
this is a also another big challenge for us like i said like you know we are a very cosmopolitan uh, community and especially when we come from different countries what what people understand is completely different from what sometimes we try attempt to say so there are so many layers which we really need to you know like you no know, really need to bridge then community awareness diverse and periodic inspiring awareness and programs the last is focus on abundance with other working groups new economic model to orbel this is specific to the economic plan and the last is uh, uh, capacity to raise financial resources patterns around the world so these are the 20 like if you see we had 10 uh, sectors i mean 10 uh, main major things which were looked into and we dis- uh, we thought let's work concentrate on these two which will help us to move forward so which actually brings us to around 20 sub sectors so now each of these two like if you see town planning we have phase wise participatory planning pursue strategy status so these are the two sub sectors which we kind of identified now what are we going to do on this so ideally if you see there are f- there are six things which we actually we thought like no we will take it up what were the things the galaxy elements the geo features the zoning edp bio regional buffer land use disaster preparedness if you see in physical structure uh, infrastructure we had mobility energy internet water waste habitat so for each of these uh, 10 we apart from that we have these six domains which we had to really work on so you have two into six out of 10 so it actually brings us to around 120 uh, details of the mosaic into which like you know we have this opportunity to really focus on and it's what is interesting is all these 120 are very unique mosaics it, it, there's no repetition in it and each of it needs expertise in terms of research in terms of like you know uh, learning in terms of like you no know, mobilization so each of it needs a, a very high level of thought process going into urban design again we talk about collective living beauty technology integration inclusive functions ground realities nature friendly similarly for social infrastructure population education city center collective recreation safety and security health and wellness applied research yes environment conscious so i think you know it's it's a long endless thing like now where we actually have like i said like now six for each of these things yeah communication resource mobilization so what we would like to make as a prayer today is like now what we are seeing here today is not building something which is brick and mortar there are so many layers which are present to make this galaxy manifest of a certain high quality and there are so many sub sectors which are possible to happen now this 120 is the basic now what we thought is even in this 120 we could actually further divided into five which actually takes us to around 600 smaller mosaics what we had in mind was when we started this workshop even if people could not contribute for the larger thing if in these 600 if somebody could say look these 600 mosaics are broken into such a way that it's all for a period of one year maximum that's all so which means if you are able to do it in one year each of these individual mosaics these 600 mosaics we actually put the whole picture in place and this is where actually we were looking at it and then it's about phasing how we implemented we implemented in 2 years we implemented in 3 years it, it's based on our availability of resources and the time and whatever it is but i think it's very important for us to get these 600 mosaics in place right now and these 600 mosaics either you know, people can contribute by offering their time or they could offer their uh, resources or they could offer expertise or they could be a connect with the outside world uh, whichever way it is like you know we are we are more than happy to do it and also if you look into it you could see the scale with which it has to be done like you know there's such a variety of fields which needs to be covered it's practically impossible for just four or five people or even a matter of like you know five six people in our office to really make it happen we can hold the ground uh, make sure the fort is in place but we really need to move forward and this being the 150th anniversary of shri arbindo i think like you know this would be the best time for us to get these 600 pieces of mosaic in place Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take. Okay. You want me to run through this?
Thank you, Shirazha. We would invite uh, Tuan to bring a sense of a little bit history and so would you add into what Shirazha is already presenting? Good morning, everyone. So, I'm going to make it much simpler than 600 mosaics. Very complicated, no? Have you lost count? I, I have already lost uh, after the fifth mosaic already. I thought of but it is a very systematic approach. As all of you know, uh, in the early days of Auroville, the mother was herself monitoring the progress of Auroville. Uh, she used to have, when Roger was in town, she used to have daily meetings with him. <laughs> People like Shamsundarji and Dayanji who has just arrived, who was, he, had, he did the land, most of the land, the person who just entered Dayanji, he did most of the land purchase. He was given that responsibility by the model. They had to report to her almost every day. On the market. On the progress. I was told once a very beautiful story that when Shamsundar went to the mother about some land issue, that they were negotiating with somebody in Kulapari. I think the villager was willing to sell for. Sorry, is it now okay? Okay, sorry. So, when, for example, in one example is that the mother was very much focusing on the land of Auroville and Dianam who has just entered here, he was in charge of that. And there were examples where, for example, Shyam Sundar would tell the mother, the villager is willing to sell for 5,000 per acre. Those, those were the prices in those days. And we have offered 3,000, so we are negotiating. And the mother would say, why are you delaying? Give the 5,000 and get it done. And she has even the daughter of Shamsundar has once told me that the mother even was shaking physically Shamsundar, and he was a very thin person, as you remember, to say, come on, let's get going. So one of the many dimensions of the mother, the mother has so many dimensions, was that she was also very much pushing the project. She was in a hurry. At one point, it was said that Matsumandir should be completed by the centenary of Shiro which is 1972 and that the town would be built within 20 years. She had herself signed a project proposal which went even to the Ford Foundation to complete the project in 10 to 20 years. She wanted the Olympic Games to be held in Auroville. So let us be clear that the founder of Auroville, the mother, was in a hurry. She wanted the project to be built. The mother already had the ashram in Pondicherry with about 2,500 people. That was one manifestation of Sri Aurobindo's vision. And she wanted another manifestation of Sri Aurobindo's vision in the form of a town with 50,000 people. Sometimes people have asked, where did the 50,000 come from? Actually, Roger had proposed to the model a smaller number, 2025. And the 50,000 came from the model herself. Now sometimes in the light of vain, in the light of vain, we say to each other, the reason that the mother wanted 50,000 is that she already had the experience that even in the ashram only 10% are doing the yoga. <laughs> so if we have 50,000, at least 5,000 will do the yoga. <laughs> That's in the light of vain. <coughs> so an in interesting observation by some of the urban planners, Dr. B.V. Doshi was in Auroville, he has been many times, but when he was here in the 80s, and he did not know much about Auroville at that time, <coughs> we made a round of Auroville, and when we met here in Baradivas, one of the first questions he asked was, why are you people so scattered? Three people here, five people there, ten there, almost everyone has their own community. And that is not how a town develops. And it is true that the infrastructure also becomes very, very expensive. So he said you should build clusters. So one person asked, what is the size of a cluster? And he says a cluster is at least 10,000 people. Then with 10,000 people, you get a cluster life. 
And you know, 10,000 people also justifies at least two barbers, three plumbers, five carpenters, three doctors. So a cluster life is what you need. And then I remember I was the one to ask him, after he had addressed the issue of clusters, I asked him, but then what is the, crit if the critical mass for the cluster is 10,000, what is according to you the critical mass for the township? He said to get a feeling of a township and the life of a township, you need 40 to 60,000 people. And he did not know at that time that 50,000 was the number of all of them. So 50 is exactly between 40 and 60. So even from a planning point of view, we have now to come to the conclusion that the mother was also a very good urban planner. <laughs> when Roger pointed out in a long letter that he wrote to the mother in 1965, he wrote a note to her about all sorts of concerns he had about the township development. And one of his concerns was cars. He wrote to the mother in 1965 that cars in all the cities create havoc. They spoil cities. In fact, he used some stronger words, but I'm not going to repeat those words, about cars. And the mother in her own handwriting, I have a copy of it, wrote in the margin of that note, of that paragraph, electrical vehicles, 15 kilometers per hour, 200 kg payload. She even calculated the payload, it means about four people. Mother in 1965. Alan Musk was not even born. <laughs> there was no testing. So, and I can give you many more examples to show that the mother in her collaboration with Roger, we are way ahead of times. Some people say the master plan of Auroville, which is based on the galaxy plan, is outdated. In a recent communication with some friends, I say it was post-dated. <laughs> like a post-dated check. It was way ahead of its time. And you know, as Srivatsa rightly said, a visionary town is timeless. I hope you know the difference between vision and mission. A vision is something that you see. The mother saw all of them. And she said it is there already. It has to come down. A mission is something you have to do in order to implement the vision. You never hear people say vision accomplished. People will say mission accomplished. So there is a series of missions which Srivatsa has explained. 600 which have to be implemented now to get the vision manifested. So therefore, you can never say that the galaxy plan which the mother had seen, or the vision that she had seen, is outdated or even postdated. It is undated. It is for all times to come. What will change over a period of time is the manner, the building materials that you use. Today we have more, much more opportunity to do solar energy, we have more choice in e-mobility, that will change, technology. But the vision is indeed timeless. And it is a town which is supposed to have a life in it, a society, to manifest Sheol Windows' vision. It is a town with a vision. It is not a town for us. Another very big misunderstanding that I sometimes notice amongst ourselves is that we see ourselves as beneficiaries or stakeholders. We are not beneficiaries or stakeholders. If at all there is a stakeholder, there is only one, the divine. If at all you want to talk about more stakeholders, you could say the world at large. We are the voluntary workers who came here to help to build that town, develop it and create the social and economic infrastructure for it. We are not the beneficiaries. There is neither a benefactor nor is there a beneficiary. This is a visionary town. So we cannot demand, even from the TDC, you must build a town to my liking. No, to nobody's liking. It's not a town that can be measured on the scale of likes and dislikes. It is built and seen at a completely different scale. So I think the opportunity of the 150th anniversary of Shilbin is also, with all of us, to bring the town back to the level where it belongs at a visionary level and to manifest it, as the model said, as a laboratory of evolution, as a city for the future, 
as the cradle for the superman. At that level, we have to build and manifest the township. Thank you, Tuan. I wish the passion could be shared by the people who are also on the other side, no? The same vision if they could understand them. I'm sure they will. May I request now Dayananji to please come here and say a few words? Or if you... Yeah, please, I can. Bring the mic here. Shall, shall I bring the mic there itself? You can speak from there. I can't. Mata, 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 
If you ask me, I can tell you some what questions. You know, how can I divert so much here? Which one to tell? Which one to tell? Which one to tell? You know, so much things are there. And for Bob, government of India contact, Mother said this I am. So I have I have to use some designation. You know, when you when you uh, correspond with government of India, you need some designation. You can't just go and say I am Madhu Lal and no. So I gave my gave my son the designation secretary. <laughs> they will see at least somebody you are speaking. They will think they are speaking to somebody who is responsible. So I said secretary or who you are. So I was the first secretary of the world. <laughs> Plus estate manager, plus coordinator, farmers training and education program, plus director, sun and water irrigation project, plus member Tamil Nadu Planning Commission, plus member National Agriculture Commission, plus the child of the mother, the child of the mother, more than anything else, child of the mother. Yes. Could you say something to us to take this city forward? To the next stage, what would you recommend to the team that has just given a presentation? What are your recommendations to accelerate the development of Malus Town? It's already happening. <laughs> well, see, it's doing already. Already, Secretary Dita has taken all the steps necessary to accelerate the. the Building the city 
for the galaxy, for all of that has been presented. But if you can only do it by police presence, hired gundas, and I was a person who was actually manhandled by them on site, I'm just asking the room this question because we are characterized as being on the other side Swaha, may I request you something? Swaha? All I'm saying is that so Swaha. many of us are not so many of us that were Swaha. up there are not against the city May I request we you something? The methodology. Swaha, may I request you something? We will certainly answer your question but now the request to all of you is to ask any question that you may want to ask of Dayanandji. And we will answer every question that you have to Dayanandji because he's got to leave. He's a little yeah. head this way. I appreciate it. I'm sorry, a complete stranger here, but um, I have learned a lot about it from my aunt. And my question to you is when the mother spoke to you, did she ever envision like a uh, Carbon neutral, completely carbon neutral future. What they talk about? Did she ever see any of those visions? Carbon neutrality, environment friendly. I didn't have my, my provident fund that they never take it. You said, 
I will give you a cup. That is the best decision in my life. I was at a moment released to heaven. All the nonsense of promotion, seniority, GPM, PPM, all stupidities which I was involved, I was released in one stroke. May, may I ask you the question? I would like to know the. We know in the in the galaxy plan, five square kilometer is the city area, and there is a periphery of fifteen square kilometer, which we call as the green zone. Can you write it, and then we read it out so I can show it to him. So the question is that, what was our view about the green zone? Green zone, you see, what uh, did uh, you say? So, that is actually welcome. Green zone, welcome. But the point is one thing to have the local vegetation. Not vegetation from outside, you know. You know, that as a as a qualified forest officer, I'm telling you now. We used to do follow wrong policies in government to government, and that's why because we have to show success in government. We have to show success. So we plant trees which will succeed, but that is not the idea here. Not to lose eucalyptus and acacia. They belong to Australia, and you can't identify the species because there are thousand species of acacia, thousand two hundred species of eucalyptus. So they are all about eucalyptus hybrid. That means you don't know the growth rate or how fast they will grow. So not to bring in species from outside because they become aggressive and drive away indigenous species. That has happened. If you go and see. Uh, one of the farms, you will see that how the foreign species have aggressively occupied land and driven away local species. So it is used to indigenous local species, endemic species. Does that answer your question? Whoever has it. Any last question? One last question. How can you how can you not uh, use machines? I don't understand. You see, in the beginning, protection is done by. Uh, Labor and machines have to be used for concreting. See, concrete mixer. It's a machine. You have to use machinery. There was nothing wrong in using machinery of a building part. But the Bharat Nivas was meant to be the pavilion of India. It was meant to be the pavilion of India, but it is not. Where well, all different states will have their uh, display of the uniqueness of their uh, particular state. That was why Bharat was also. It was not meant for administrative purposes or uh, entertainment. It is meant for education, for visitors who come to see the entire India they can see in Bharat Nivas. I also want to thank the energy for, in spite of his health, being here and patiently answering my questions. Thank you from all of us.
Now I invite Srijita Ji to come and explain right now what are the situation, what are the current happenings and how, what are the steps that are being taken right now. And I also then invite Toby to speak a few words and then we open the floor for q and I'm sure there are many questions and, and we can answer one by one. Yeah. Please. Please. You see this, I'll just take it, uh, I will just interfere a little bit. The, uh, the purpose of this meeting was to call all of you to see who wants to help in what way the TDC in town building. So if you have some idea, if you want to participate in whatever way, I would suggest, uh, what do you suggest? That they write to TDC or they meet Toby and Juan at the end of the meeting and yeah, and we can take down all your names and Okay? Is that clear? Okay. The table will be ready outside with the pen and paper. Please drop the message and uh, we will be in touch with you. So, yeah, and uh, email ID, your name and phone number. That will be sufficient and your area of uh, inclination will be very good. So, Shrijita is uh, invited to update what is the status Today, we are standing in the middle of a lot of emotion. So, to you, Shrijita. I have never really spoken in public before. Mike. Can you hear me now? No. no. I have never really spoken before in public. This would be the first time. So, please do forgive me if it's anywhere displaced or not up to the mark. Uh, I will try to be very brief. Uh, I am an Ashram ex student, graduated in 1990, and have been working with the United Nations on difficult subjects of violence, human trafficking, and have tried to work in a, as much as a humane way possible, <coughs> always taking into account the vision of Mother and Shurabindo. And my specialization was in social psychology and criminal law, which is quite an unusual combination when we work on these subjects. So when I came back to Oroville in 2008, I started working at the Matri Mandir offerings desk. And uh, I thought that was it. I would not, my services would not be required anywhere else. However, I was called in to serve the Oroville Security Services and Oroville Ambulance, so the Oroville Emergency Services as you would call it. So I've been working there since the last four or five years and it's true that we observe so many positive things in the community but as well as negative moments too. And that is where I realized that probably we need to work on prevention, education, especially with the youth. Because there is a misconception, even me I would say, I was not very much aware of the master plan, I tried to educate myself. And in the same way I would expect today the Oroville youth, as well as the Ashram X students who have graduated after me, probably to read up the master plan, to try to understand what is being implemented and to give the support to our Secretary Srimati Jayanti Ravi with whom I have been working in the last few days to go ahead. The time is now. 53 years have gone by. What have we done? Can we look inside ourselves? Can we rise above our differences? To say we are here to build the city for the mother. We are not here, as Thuan very rightly said, to be beneficiaries. We are here to serve. I will not go into the details of what has been happening during the last few days. But I will invite each of us to an introspection of how we want to serve the mother to move on and help the work to proceed. Victoire Aladou Smer.
वंदे मातरम थैंक यू शेजिता जी चौबी My name is Toby. I work for the TDC. Um, like this? Yeah. Um, better. Yeah. Okay. Um, nine months ago, less than nine months ago, um, what Srivatsa presented here was tested out among friends. And one of the reactions, or actually not one, but quite a few of the reactions we got, but hey, the city is coming. We didn't believe it anymore. That was one of the most, I mean, things what we, what we said, huh? It, it's so obvious, there's a master plan, and there's an idea, and it was, was, was given to us, and, and all that kind of things, what was completely normal in our team, suddenly we got back as a reflection, well, hey, it, it was forgotten somehow, not with everybody, but with a lot of people. And step by step, we started to build up together all kinds of things which are necessary to take the next steps in city building. And we had a good team. We didn't differ much. And we were full of energy to get that done. Because to build a city, and you can easily say, oh, let's build a city, but to get a going, and to bring all the things in place, what need to be in place to get it going, is quite some work. Not only calling, not only calling what is already there and it will manifest, but some work has to be done also. And what we somehow felt is the more we were aligned, the more we were calling. And we started our meetings with reading the charter, with reading the two Aravilli, with things like this, and then an atmosphere started in which we could work to say what is necessary to get the things done. The presentations went all around Aravilli, and we got more feedback, and step by step, new things started to happen. The plans came on the table. We need housing. We need a base to build where the city can be built on. And we call that infrastructure and roads. So it becomes suddenly very tangible, very, very physical. And when you make the first plans for, hey, here should be a crown road, and there should be a radial, and there should be a house, then you see the whole history of Auroville in front of you. People who build a house, Second house, third house, cold community, poor well. I mean, it fans around it. And then you want to go into this and talk with people who have been 15, 20, 25 years. And we had those discussions endlessly. We said, look, the fence has to be replaced. Uh, your house never got a permission. All that kind of things came in front of us just to do actually quite simple things, to lay a cable here, to put a pipe there, or to bring a road somewhere. We are now in the middle of this. We are blessed with a few things that happened in the last five, six months. The secretary brought money. The secretary brought people in. And all that thing built up to all kinds of, of, of necessary things to put the next steps. Now we are sitting here and discussing it. Not that it has to come, but how can we help? We have cross the line of will it come, it will come. It's only how are we going to organize it. This is our, our main thing. So in that sense, I completely resonate with the other speakers that we need help. Secretary cannot do it alone. TDC cannot do it alone. Working committee cannot do it alone. We need our civilians to step in here. We need engineering approach, we need hands, we need bricks, we need pipes, all that kind of things is coming up. And for that we need money, and we need hands, and we need a lot of things. And we have now made a program to organize it. So it is not, again, 
will it happen? It is how are we going to proceed in this? And in the meantime, and that is also something that you saw in the last few days, yeah, I mean, the road was planned here already for 20 years. Communities have developed. And then, I mean, after talking and talking and talking and talking, it, it didn't work. So a little bit more pressure was necessary. Unfortunately, if there would be a bit more help from different parts, we could have stepped over that phase. But it is not like this. We see here how our planet is organized, that when you're really stuck into, I have say, a personal kind of attitude in land and house and that kind of thing, that it is difficult to depersonalize from it. Especially when you have a lot of work in it, then you see it as mine. And there we have to depersonalize. It is one of the main things, if we really manage to depersonalize ourselves, then the city will be an enormous acceleration. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. So, I invite now Chandresh Bhai to give us some ideas about this new kind of acceleration that Toby talked about. Thank you, Lakshay. Um, a lot of familiar faces here, uh, people I grew up with. We have uh, played, we have learned, we have grown up, enjoyed the dramas, and we did, uh, of course, we all had our arguments also, and <laughs> our fun. But, uh, so, this, I would, I would say this is, uh, you know, we all have lost over the three years, we have gone through this, uh, depression of uh, societies all over the world, right? The COVID really brought a halt everywhere. There was a stoppage and everybody kind of came together. Actually, COVID is an example of uh, how people came together because of crisis. And uh, what phenomenal stories I heard about how the ex-students of the ashram came together to work the logistics, to help all the seniors, all the ashramites, and keep all the services running during COVID was an inspiration and an experience that I relate because even when we were growing up, we were going out. Whenever there was a need, we went out, right? So all of us have been used to working on the thing without thinking. When the need is there, when we are called, we are there, right? So the same spirit at this point, Auroville is now coming through a point where we all have to start working together and we have to have a new beginning. So this I would want to bring as an invitation, not only to all those who are here, but actually we are streaming out to uh, live and it's an invitation out to the world. All the friends of Auroville, I worked in AVI USA, I worked in AVI International, right? I have known so many people across so many parts of the world. I think this is an invitation for all of us, Aurovillians and students of the ashram, fraternity of golden chain. Let's all invite the collaboration that we grew up with. We understood that natively and we have to bring it back into Auroville. The work is there. There's so much possibilities. Yes, there will be differences, but then I think what as Mother said, the hierarchy is of our inner nature that we link in with. That's where the Consciousness development comes and then I'm sure if we are more open to our force, we'll find the right place we can collaborate. Because there's just so much of work as you can see, you know, 650 <laughs> uh, different works. That's just for the building, right? But as uh, she was saying, social engineering, each person has their own expertise, right? I'm, I'm sure there is a way for, I mean, there's a need and an invitation open for all of uh, all of you all of our friends out in the world, please come, welcome. Thank you, Chandresh. Thank you, Toby, for being so courageous, especially Toby, to be able to say what you were able to say. It needs a lot of courage and we have going through a lot in that. I would like to invite Allah 
I saw him here. Is he Alan? Is around? Just okay. So if Alan, don't see it, right? So let's just start with the uh, question and answer. Uh, so I I can I, there's another glitch. The second mic is not working, so I won't be able to bring the microphone to you. Who did you call? Alan. Alan. Yeah. Alan Grankula. Yes, Okay. No problem. So maybe we can have few more questions. And in that case, I request you to come to come here if you have any question and ask. Stage fright. You will not call this a stage now. Just come stand next to me. Hello everybody, my name is Kritatma. I'm a student of the Ashram School. Uh, I grew up here and I've uh, been witness to all of it. And, uh, so just firstly, because uh, there's a lady here who came and said that was it the right thing that was done, so I'm going to first answer that question. So the way it was done, I agree with you, it was not right. But I think the communication was been done uh, multiple times on multiple levels and in multiple ways. So at the end of the day, maybe the way it was done and what unfolded was very, very unfortunate. But Orville is a place where everybody comes together for the future, together, okay? So firstly, let us mend ourselves, let us come together here with both the factions or whatever is happening and let's move forward, okay? And let me make one thing clear that India is sovereign land, okay? This is in sovereign Indian land. So at the end of the day, if you try and tell me that the government is coming here and, you know, human rights abuses and that uh, it's, it's sedition in a way, okay? It is, uh, the, and, and the government is hiring goons. This is one of the things I saw on Instagram. I'm sorry, if the government hires goons, the government's goons is the CRPF, which is the Central Reserve Police Force. Okay, so at the end of the day, when there's stuff happening, there are a lot of egos here, okay? And one of my very close family members also has a gigantic ego, so I understand how things work. So let us put our ego in our pockets, let us come together, and let us move forward at the end of the day. Thank you. I don't want to believe that he has any stage fright, okay? <laughs> Anybody else? Tuan. Tuan, you have to ask the question and answer also yourself. Hello, no, I'm going to answer the question which was made about the carbon footprint. Who made that question? Yes. I can give you a personal experience. In 1972, I wrote to the mother whether we could put solar panels on the discs of Matrimonia. 72. And the answer came through Sham Sundar that please discuss with Roger. So we discussed with Roger and the outcome was that we don't put them on the disc because it is very difficult to maintain and they ended up where they are now, 100 kilowatt of solar is operating in Matamandir itself, offsetting all of Matamandir's energy. In our field as a whole, we have been installing solar energy before people in the world even used, knew how to pronounce solar energy, <laughs> right from the day one. There have been windmills pumping water. We don't have enough wind in our field to generate electricity, but we have enough wind to pump water. The solar energy that we have installed in just the last two years, just the last two years, is equal to 20,000 trees in terms of carbon avoidance. We have to understand how it works. A tree absorbs the carbon, CO2, and it releases it again when it dies, or when you burn it. If you use the tree for furniture, the CO2 stays inside. That's fine. But if you burn a tree or if a tree dies, the CO2 again comes back out. Whereas if you put solar energy, you avoid the very emission itself because you're replacing conventional power with renewable power. So the energy that we have installed in the last two years is equal to 20,000 trees. If I would take all the solar energy from the very beginning, it would end up to about 100,000 trees. Our view has planted 3 million trees. 3 million. That means with the present population it is 1,000 per capita. The green belt is three times the size of the city. The green belt is designed for 15 square kilometer. Now to be honest, the green belt will not be all green because there are villages, there are existing developments. Let us assume that only half the green belt becomes green finally. 
seven and a half square kilometers. Half of the city, which is five square kilometers, is also green and open. So you add that two and a half to this seven and a half, you get ten. So the ratio you get is one to four. One fourth is built up, all the rest is open and green. That is the ratio. And as I explained recently also in another meeting here, that these right of ways or the master plan roads, whatever you want, you want to call them, all added up is equal to 1.64% of the master plan. 1.64% of the master plan. Can we not even keep 1.64% free from buildings and trees? What type of stewards are we if we cannot do that? The sustainability of our wheel is also guaranteed by the following. With the energy efficiency of solar panels of 10 years ago, we made a calculation that if 42% of the roofs of our wheel, when it is built as per master plan, are covered with solar panels, we are already energy neutral. And that were the panels of 10 years ago. Today, the panels have become much more efficient, so probably 30% of the roofs is enough to make our wheel energy neutral as far as uh, renewable energy is concerned. But the problem with energy is not so much anymore the generation of energy, it is the storage of energy. Yeah. Because the sun sets at 5.36. The sun rises only at 5 or 6 in the morning. So what do you aim between? So what we have done in Augerville in the last two years, we have developed the first smart mini-grid, which, which has been endorsed by the Ministry of Power Government of India, where we demonstrate distributed solar and distributed storage. Distributed but connected, <coughs> so that any surplus of any cluster can flow to another cluster which is under deficit. And that system is operating as we speak. And every day from the first cluster which we have installed, which is near the town hall, every day between 10 and 4, on a normal day, energy is flowing through the high tension cable which is around the town to other parts of our world. So the debates which happened in the past on energy was always between two camps. One camp would say centralized. Another camp would say <coughs> decentralized. <laughs> very, very good students. So, but we have thrown both of these words out of the window. It is neither centralized nor decentralized. It is distributed and connected. And it's the same for water. Water you harvest in a distributed fashion, but you connect. Why do we have to connect? Because at no point of the day will, in a particular place, the sunshine exactly match what is needed there. The same thing with water. So by connecting it, surplus can flow to deficit and deficit can be taken care of by surplus. So the answer to your question is, I will guarantee and I can give it in writing if you give me a document right now, stamp paper, 20 rupees stamp paper, <laughs> that out of will, when it is completed, will be 100%, it will be 100% renewable, it will be more than net zero, it will be positive in CO2, in emission. Positive in the sense... <coughs> carbon negative. Carbon negative. Mm -hmm. For every positive, there is a negative. <laughs> so I would request you to understand that even the mother was busy with these engagements. She spoke about solar energy. She accepted the proposal I made for solar energy, but not on the disk, but in the garden. And she spoke about e-mobility in 1965, can you believe it? She has also spoken about desalination. Now, there's a lot of criticism about desalination today. But desalination is one source. Not that you depend on desalination. If you run desalination, the main challenge is energy. But if you generate energy from a renewable source, you could probably take care of about 20-25% of the water from a desalination plant, another 25-30% from, from service harvesting, another one from recycling, and so on. So the water strategy of Auroville is also multi-sourcing and again distributed but connected. So can we resolve from today onwards that we don't use the word centralized and decentralized anymore? Agreed? Distributed and connected. Thank you. Lost star of renewable energy. Yes, my sisters and brothers, I have two small simple questions. I will give you 10 seconds, any technical person they can answer, otherwise I have to answer. Uh, around one and a half year back, a bomb was started preparing in Auroville. And second question is, 
And when is that and who was engaged? That is the question. And second question was, when was it planned that a bomb will be prepared? A what? A bomb. 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 Yeah. Bomb. Blow up something? Yeah, blow up something, yes. <laughs> something. In order with, yes. I thought you were saying bomb. No, bomb. B-O-N-B. Anyone hear that answer? We don't have any answer. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. I, I am part of entry board and I have a privilege to uh, see people, talk to people, hear from them, their motivation, their, how they got invited. So once a, a lady came, she is uh, a spouse of an Orwellian and she wanted to get the status. And uh, when I asked uh, how your husband and he said, ah, he is very much engaged in all these things, he is always immersed in that. But today, when the first presentation came from Sivarcha, I understood that a bomb was being prepared at that time. He was so much deeply engaged and the whole team and today it burst. And the planning of preparing the dub bomb was started maybe 107 years ago. And that I am going to read it to you. It was written in August 13, uh, 31st, 1914. In this formidable disorder and terrible destruction can be seen a great working, a necessary toil preparing the earth for a new sowing which, which will rise in marvelous spikes of grain and give to the world the shining harvest of a new race. The vision is clear and precise. The plan of thy divine law so plainly dressed that peace has come back and installed itself in the hearts of the workers. There are no more doubts and hesitations, no longer any anguish or impatience. There is only the grand straight line of the work eternally accomplishing itself in spite of all, against all, despite all contrary appearances and illusory detours. These physical personalities, movements unseizable in the infinite becoming, know that they will have made humanity take one further step, infallibly and without care for the inevitable results, whatever be the apparent momentary consequences, they unite themselves with Thee, O Master Eternal. They unite themselves with Thee, O Mother Universal. And in this double identity with that which is beyond and that which is all the manifestation they see taste to the infinite joy of the perfect certitude. The beginning of the sentence, a prayer, is the 107 years ago and it will conclude in 108 years, that means it will take a year maybe, it is concluding peace, peace in all the world, war is an appearance. Turmoil is an illusion. Peace is there. Immutable peace. Mother, sweet mother who I am, thou art at once the destroyer and the builder. The whole universe lives in thy breast with all its life innumerable and thou livest in thy immensity in the least of its atoms. And the aspiration of thy infinitude turns towards that which is not manifested to cry to it for a manifestation ever more complete and more perfect. All is in one time in a triple and clairvoyant total consciousness 
the individual, the universal, the infinite. Thank you. Ganga, you wanted to say something? Would you like to come here, please? One simple thing. Um, okay, first of all, I love the whole um, building the city together and everything. I think it would be great to have a crown road so we can all walk on it together, cycle on it together, all the animals can run and the, kid, the kids can play to have renewable energy, you know? Hold the mic closer. Everything, like just organized, like, just, I love it, it's amazing. Um, just one thing, I feel like there's no denying that there's been quite a hurt in Orville, like whether you ex whether you want to see it or not, like it's just it's true, it's there. Like, <laughs> um, and I suggest it's only a suggestion um, that before we start working together, you know, I feel like in in Orville we all have our personal conflicts and everything. Like, we'll always have a problem with like either our neighbor or someone we work with. It's so common, right? We always Right? Like, yeah. even in YC, even in the youth center, there's always conflicts. We, we talk through it. Um, I strongly suggest that before we start working together, that we get, to, we get to talk with each other and be harmonious in a very personal way and in a very impersonal way. To have that harmony, whether we're being very personal, whether we're being very impersonal, just to have that harmony, just to come to a conflict resolution, because we all have our traumas, we all have our intentions, and you know, we all have our limitations. And I think it'd be great to know who lives in this community, to get to understand everybody's backstories. And, you know, to, I want to understand why people are the way they are. And I want to also feel understood why I am the way I am. And there's such a higher truth when everybody is in harmony with it. Like, that's all I wanted to say. I think building the road, like even, and like this, I just wanted to clarify like just one thing, the youth is not against tall buildings and everything. Like, you know, there's many voices in the community, but the only thing we want is to work together in harmony personally and impersonally. And if it's very difficult to talk to one another, you know, if there keeps being defenses and justifications and like, in my instance, I get super emotional and I start crying and I can't like, get a facilitator. We, we talk about it. We, whether it takes a few days, whether it takes a few years, whether it takes our whole lifetime, I think getting to know the people that we live with in our community is very important. Is it, is it like, do you feel it? Is it? Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. I'm an ex-student from the Ashram. I graduated in 95. And uh, currently, I am one of the executives of the Quiet Healing Center, an alternative healing center at the beach. Uh, I have been racking my brains about how to bring about an inclusivity in our approach towards 
taking forward this energy which is coming this energy which is coming this money which is coming we have definitely a very strong secretary today uh, in our oval and somehow i feel what is lacking what is lacking is only a little bit of flexibility a little bit of skill a little bit of skill in bringing the people together and that is what is lacking if there is a little bit more flexibility yoga by the way is called skill in works and we are doing karma yoga here in oroville just as you know we are doing it in the ashram as well so if the various voices uh who are expressing themselves about sustainability issues about the ddp the detailed development planning if they can be heard their their concerns can be met harmoniously by the tdc this kind of conflict would not have erupted i unfortunately have been hearing a lot this uh, this thing about yes we have to go ahead with the city and everybody agrees that we have to go ahead with the city we have to go ahead with the galaxy plan mother's gal galaxy plan but the approach is lacking inclusivity the approach is being till now exclusive the tdc the town development council has not been listening to other very valid expert inputs be it a david who 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 was with the dream catchers and who brought in a lot of discussions and thinking about how to go about building this town plan this town plan unfortunately is old the galaxy is something timeless but this town plan is not an updated town plan it is a town plan which was agreed upon in the year 2000 what's the question so the question is madam secretary could you host a kind of a forum where all these experts who have very valid sustainable issues come forward and they really break their heads together and bring forward a very dynamic way to go forward where then there will be so much less conflict okay. Okay. i would like to quickly respond to that because i yeah. think you're also asking me this yeah, yeah no no yeah yes. all right fair wait for the Uh, just a bit. Thank you. You want to question or respond to that? Yeah. It's a kind of reflection about many things in Aroville. I came to Aroville 26 years ago. I have been discussing the galaxy no galaxy for 26 years, and still is not resolved. A very positive exercise was made in 1999. It was approved the master plan for Aroville. It was based in the galaxy. Have all the blessings of Roger, that was the man mandated by the mother to to provide the plans of the city. Not any residents assembly. The mother was not very favorable to that kind of organizations. And the matter, the problems of these discussions, I have been for 26 years. In the last five years, I am going to give a practical example. I am part of the service trust. We have a cable, high tension cable to put, paid by the government of India, 50 lakhs. We have been discussing for five years. Five years has not been implemented, or we have not have also the decency to return the money to the government. And the cables, everybody can see the cables are on the road, and we are losing 5,000 rupees every day. Discussions we have had a lot. The last 
difficult days, I have to say. I know that the secretary has been going around speaking with everyone, everyone, to avoid the problems and the tensions. If the people were receptive in some places, uh, Aurodan, Mita and others, the problem has been solved without any kind of fighting. But I have to tell you, for me, the lesson of these days has been very painful. It is that one sector of Arobin, the all green belters, and even between them you will find different people, they are determined to not allow the city to be done. They are determined. They have some of what they are capable. I have to say that the green people have hijacked the Aurobin, the project, to develop only one aspect. We are for the integrality of everything. The project of Orbit has, has many dimensions. One of them, and the only justification in front of the eyes of the Indian government, is to implement the vision of the matter. I have to tell you today, I don't think that everybody in Orbit is for the vision of the matter. And then you have the problems that we are facing, and I think that we are going to have more, and I am ready to go through all of them. Because it's the only way to open up and other people will have to think about it. I have been thinking for 26 years and I am convinced that now is the moment to go more accelerated and with, because the, the, the man is here, the government has made the best proposal, we have the best opportunity in all these years and I think that we have to follow that in a hurry. That's all. Josefa, just one feedback. Just one feedback. Yeah. Everybody is for the galaxy plan. Yeah. It's not true. It's a long, it's a it's wrong misconception that the green belters are against the galaxy plan. Everyone with the fresh, and I admit that it was different earlier in the past years, but now in the present day, everybody is agreeing to having a galaxy plan. The only problem is the way forward, how to implement it. Inclusively. I mean, you know, there were factually some uh, incorrect ones, uh, uh, Samrat, I need to correct it here. You are saying that the plan, you all agree with the galaxy plan, but not with the master plan. But we must also understand for the audience here, in 1999, we as community, majority, wise, I think it was about 90% plus residents, approved the master plan. We all agreed on it. And we submitted to the governing board, saying that as a community, this is... And mind you, from 1968, the Galaxy Plan was displayed while Auroville was inaugurated. The Galaxy Plan that we all see now. From 1968 to 1999, so it, it is about 31 years if I'm not wrong. We took nice sweet time to discuss how to evolve it into a nice actionable plan. That is what we call it as a master plan. We as community really took really long time to discuss what should be the details. In 1999, from the community, we said that this is our plan. Nobody imposed it on us. The governing board accepted what we presented to them gracefully. They did not say anything else. In 2001, the governing board notified it. They, they approved it. This was not enough. They said this still remains within the Oroville community. In, thereafter, in 2010, the same plan was given to Government of India and it was gazetted by the Government of India, which makes it as a legal document. You can't just wish it away. There is some chronology to the events. We can't just at some point say that I prefer 1976 plan of Oroville. You can't do that. And from 19... From 2010, since it was gazetted, we have been, we have developing all over based on that plan. The solar kitchen, the unity pavilion right now you are sitting here is placed on the crown. The Savitri Bhavan is on it. Language lab is on it. The solar kitchen is on it. Library is on it. The, the crown is already been manifested. All that we are saying is that now the crown is there. There are, like I said, half a set developments are happening. Can we now also have a road? And mind you, this road that is that is being contested upon right now, the work order to make the road was given in 2009. 
The work order was given in 2009. Alam Rampula was not here, but he was instrumental in making that. You will see the road right now, with about one plus kilometer has already been made in bits and pieces, unfortunately. We did wherever we could. Rest is all claimed as the residents as their with entitlement. They are not letting the crown go through it because they feel it's infringing on their freedom. Now, the question is, now do we go back and ask ourselves as residents again and again or do we honor our commitment that we as community made in some point? And all the land of Auroville is bought not by any personal money, it's bought on donated money. You all, perhaps many of you have donated to Auroville. Tell me what is the commitment, what is the pitch, what is the pitch that we go out and ask for money? Do we say that we need the money to build a forest in the South India? Do we go and say we need eco-village? Or do we say that we need to build a galaxy plan? The money has been given to buy the land to make the galaxy plan. So we have also the commitment to all the people with all the goodwill they donated the money to, to build all over. I feel at many levels we fail if we do not continue and keep on discussing. Yes, the participatory process that you refer to often of course, we are, no, who denies that? We all want it. In my view, Auroville is unique. We cannot compare ourselves with any other city. The, the town planning in any other city, perhaps somebody from Agra would be designing Ujjain. Auroville is not like that. In Auroville, all the working groups, the members, I was in Auroville Town Development Council. I had no qualification to be the town planner, but I was, I, I mean, I was put there to work. And so is all the other people in Auroville. In my view, this is an exemplary example of how a participatory process at town planning can happen. I mean, you, there is no other template you can compare it with. We ourselves design it. We, we, when we go and protest in town hall, it's as if somebody else. We are not bureaucrats being transferred here to work on it. We are community members ourselves. So this is us versus us. Yes, some people think that there is no dialogue, but also we must recognize that if there are people who are for giving beautiful ideas, I also ask them, why do you bring up the ideas when there are a lot of deliberation which already happened? When it's an actionable time, it's when we get the, is it easy to get government money to do some work? It is not. We have had multiple deliberation, there are legal documents to follow through and so on and so forth. And based on that, when we go and do the work, suddenly somebody says, you know, I have a new idea. Okay, where were you? So it's a yeah, question. I don't agree to that Lakshay. There were it's proposals. It's now we have to stop because we have done enough. We have come for what here? Exactly. Yeah. So we are yeah, just listening to what you people are going on exchanging. Yes. Go ahead and we leave, no? Yes. Why are we wasting our time here? No, that's why I'm just trying to say that enough of Vakya Yoga that we have done in our field. We are so lucky to have a secretary who is full of enthusiasm and she is for moving forward the dream of the mother and our uh, governing board members are there also they are completely convinced about that this mother's dream should be manifested so now we go forward with the 150th and uh, i pass to you so any question from the guests would be very very good Suggestions, from ideas from the guests. Probably, would you like to hear? Yeah. Come, come. Go, go, go. I just want to make two quick points. Yes, please. One is, I think... Hi, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, just two quick points. One is that, uh, you know, we have been hearing a lot, right, from the morning about the physicality of all of it, right? Uh, it's just an observation. Uh, I think all of it is much more than the physicality of it. And certainly the human factors and the future of mankind is in doing things together, for sure. That is something which is really causing a little bit of... Uh, saw that young girl there, she was so distraught when she came up here and instead of somebody reaching out to her, I could see somebody else standing here trying to tell her, no, 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 you're wrong, I'm right. So that's not something that we expect out of all of this, number one. The second point is, this, we, uh, the, the former students, 
the mother's disciple, other disciples beyond Orville were invited here, I guess for a specific purpose. Not really to kind of tell them why the difference, what is the difference. You want some contribution from people with their skills, with their knowledge, with their, uh, with their uh, uh, love for Orville. Let's talk about that. Yes, yes. If you have internal differences, it's normal. All humans have internal differences. Sort it out in internal forums. You don't have to call the rest of the world here to a live telecast and then try and sort out your problems. I also want to say that look, there is nothing new what is happening here. Don't get so oversensitive. Human conflicts, differences of opinion are there all over the world here. Yeah? You have it in our own homes. Right? So just take a chill pill as they say and try and sort your problems out and say what is it that we can do. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon everybody. I am Dr. Chaudhary. I have been here for 60 years. So, student of the ashram. And I have been uh, part, I would say part, of the uh, creation of Auroville, like many of us here. So I have written something, but I will just read the, uh, the last passage. And of course, one question which I have for Aurovillians, non-Aurovillians and those who have come to Aurovill for whatever reason. What is Aurovill? Is it an ecological project? No. Is it a social project? Is it a humanitarian project? Is it a green city project? Is it an educational project, scientific, religious, Mike. retirement, home or club, Mediterranean and the rights? What is Orville? Why have we come here? Well, then I, then I go straight to the last passage where I have said, but at the last, uh, as I have observed over the years, how with our mental, thank you, how with our mental differences we have deviated from the divine instructions to suit our own conveniences. Why do we have to debate over a divine plan laid down on paper instead of just executing a command with simple humility, loyalty, efficiency, our relative expertise, gratitude for having this opportunity and establish a harmony at all levels to successfully help as instruments to make this divine project a vibrating living reality for the world to see and transform itself. We are only pioneers on the ground, but we have to go beyond the peace and love era which failed miserably. Uh, just give you a short uh, description of why I call peace and love because I used to frequently go to the park in the 1967-68 era when the hippie movement started. And we used to visit to all these hippies with the caravans singing Joan Baez and Bob Dylan. So I got so mesmerized, I took up the guitar and I started singing. So that was the flower children. Yeah. So that failed miserably. But they were seekers. These people who were here, they were seekers. And people like them came to Orville to look for something. I remember, I don't know how many were there, we used to line the roads from Tindivanam, the road, the highway, which is now our national highway. The single lane highway which came from Tindivanam to Pondicherry. We lined the highway to receive the caravans. I don't remember, 14 buses or four, which came to Auroville. And Auroville, the parched land, where the soul was already implanted by the mother. So it was already a living entity, it was a living on earth, it was a parched land. And all these people who came in those days, I'm talking about 68, and how they dug and built 
They came as a gold in a gold rush. We call this a gold rush. And they dug in the burning hot sun. They dug to build, to grow trees, to grow the path, and sow the seed of the soul of Aurora. So that these trees and the path, I mean, what do you say, friends, is a degashi, the spiritual. Uh, the spiritual energy. But I continue after that. Uh, we are all pioneers on the ground, but we have to go beyond the peace and love era, which failed miserably. We have to try to go, uh, I'm sorry. We have to try to go beyond all these human instincts that these projects I see are focused upon while forgetting the true spiritual essence. which is the divine wish. It is only in this spiritual, not a human material aim, it's all that, that all the projects can take shape harmoniously and make of Auroville a heavenly smart city. For all, Auroville is not limited to our, our lifespans. It is for a time in eternity, as long as the human consciousness takes to change. But can we not be proud to be the barbarians of this new age to come? We are not the end. Those of us who are willing to be part of this project single-mindedly, without contradictions, unconditionally, and with total faith and loyalty, concentrate, consecrate our raison d'etre in the service of the mother and Sri Aurobindo's vision. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Prabir and I am also an ex-student of the ashram. For many of us, our association with Auroville started on 28th of February 1968 when we came in busloads for the inauguration of the Foundation Stone Ceremony. And since then, we have been associated, continue to be associated when we were kids, we used to come with Richard to plant trees and the association continued. Every time I come to Auroville, I want to settle down here. But uh, I'm working on so many different issues that I really can't be 100% committed to being part of Auroville. However, there are many things on which we are working with the Auroville community. Um, First, we were working on the beach restoration project and the first meeting which happened was with Vail Lavanir. We had organized it um, here and that's how the whole beach restoration project started. We have done the, we've been working with the government of Pondicherry, sometimes with, sometimes against. But we've been um, working with the government of Pondicherry to restore the Pondicherry section of the beach. Initially they were not, so we had to be against. Now we are working together, so it's okay. Now we are working towards the restoration of the remaining coast up to Auroville. So this is something which is an ongoing project where we need more people and you know discussions and we need to take it forward because this we consider this as an entire cell. Half of it is restored, 45% sorry. Now the remaining portion has to be restored so we have a whole beach. This is about ecology, this is about life, this is about the coastal communities. So these are positive things that we do and the, the underlying factor is collaboration and integration. Collaboration is about enrolling every single person. We may have differences of opinion, but we have to move forward. So we have a lot of differences of opinion with the government sometimes, but we have to keep meeting them and talking to them so that we can move forward. And integration is about taking in all the different aspects. We have to take in studies, we have to look into planning, and of course collaborative planning, because we are talking about a shared vision and collective action. We have to talk about policies, we have to talk about uh, implementation, monitoring, all these things have to be done together. So collaboration and integration are integral parts. And then we, in 2008, we started the bioregional planning because Auroville cannot be just isolated. Auroville, you have an Auroville bioregion, but if we suck too much water in Pondi, Auroville is going to be affected as well because we share the same water resources, the groundwater aquifers. So we are working on a bioregional planning because you can't have a peaceful city and noise going around all over. So we are talking about a bioregion which extends from Marakhanam and goes right up to Kadlor, it's a 40 kilometers radius. 
and we've been having engagements and even in that it has been with Val Lavanir and people in Orbit, so many different groups we've been working with on the biological planning. It is moving but it needs to move forward at a much faster pace because the kind of development which is happening unless as you can see that unless we take up this bioregional planning forward quickly we will be in trouble in every pocket we will be in trouble. So this is something which we are working on. We are also working on rejuvenation of water. Now water is going to be one of the key issues. 50,000 people I think the present water situation in Auroville, I don't know whether it is enough, but if you have to think of water for 50,000 people, you have to, we have to do a lot of work. And for that, regarding all these projects, we are willing to collaborate. We have been collaborating and we will continue to collaborate. And this is, these are things, practical things, which is not only about involvement of people, but it's about our happiness. It's about all this, um, you know, it's, it's actually opening out and coming together and working together. These are things which we can work on and we come to understand, it's not, we don't understand each other just by meeting, it's only when we start working that we understand perspectives, we understand uh, people's views and that's how we come to know each other. It's only through working, it's not just by talking and talking and talking. So, uh, our earnest appeal is, let's work together on all these fronts in improving the environment, in improving the lives, and um, let's continue to work together. And Mother's Dream, yes, we are all part of Mother's Dream, so let's look at it at that. And we may have differences, yes, but let's continue to talk and let's continue to see how we can talk on points that we meet to start with. If we can start talking on points we meet, then slowly we can resolve the other issues as well. So, thank you very much. Hello and good afternoon. Uh, this is about uh, the multiversity project that's coming up, whether it's coming near Oroville or elsewhere. I have a request if we can uh, make this multiversity project as a spiritual university which grooms uh, yogis, rishis, and jnanis, then that would be a best tribute to Sri Arbindo that we can get. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, any of you know me? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to little take your diversion to another point. Most of you have been t speaking about what uh, Tuan very rightly said: the vision and the mission. I think what we have been concentrating upon is the mission. Well, all the details of, that have been given are wonderful, and of course uh, they are very valid and must be done now. No, but uh, I would like to concentrate on the vision part. And I was, I'm involved, I was involved since the beginning of beginnings of my own contact with Auroville. It was in 1971 that I was with the mother asking her where I should work, either in the ashram or in Auroville. Well, uh, but what were the personal instructions? She said, you go to Auroville, that's fine. Then the question came up, where do I work? But that's also not important. But what is important to share with you is, the mother instructed me to go to Oroville and work with the school in education. Fine. Then after coming down from the mother, I went straight to Nalikanta Gupta. Most of you may have heard about him. And I, I asked Nalida, but this is what the mother told me. So he said, uh, he took me aside from his room to another room. He said, Anand, you are being, you are being sent as a mother for a great purpose and a beautiful thing, you are blessed. But I have to tell you one thing. There will be one section, he named the section, I will not name it. He said, they will provide the body of Oroville and another section will provide the soul of Oroville. So there is a kind of a, not a distinction and a difference and a differentiation. But what he emphasized upon was, there should be the body building, body being built, but do not forget the soul being built. So in your exuberance, in your enthusiasm to build the outer body and all these things, do not forget the soul. 
and that is one sector, I said, I will not mention the name, you said you have to provide, you have to help in the providing the soul part. So already my directions were very clear the way I should do work in Norway. And hence, after that, it became very clear, and there was my journey, and then I started my work with Savitri Bhavan and all that. So that's what I would like to emphasize upon again here. So let's not forget that the providing of the soul and the vision comes not just with the vision of what the dream is all about. We have all known about that. But my emphasis is, are we doing sufficient work and focusing on what is the vision, not of our will alone. If behind this charter, there's a whole vision of the mother and Shura Bindu, written for, from the time of Arya till, till later times. Or do we have enough centers to deal focus and, and study Shura and the mother? Or are we really engaged and you know, forgetting that there is something else we have to read? You might say, what's reading? But I agree with Tuan, without the vision which the mother has seen, okay, but to manifest that vision, we must know what it is all about. And if I have read for so many years and years and years, and today I understand, not today, even then I understand, I understood well, horrible, because I've had a background reading of Mother and Shurabhata. So my request with all of us is that let us also go and study this, not books, this vision, this vibrant consciousness. And I'll tell you with all my experience of so many 30 years and more, to read them is not to just get a knowledge, is to contact them. So their books are not just to be studied. It's a direct way to contact their consciousness. And I feel in Oroville, that is very, very important. So in all the differences that are happening, whatever as, uh, as somebody said, it will happen, the differences all in the families, okay, fine. But how do we solve them? Not just sitting together and say, what is your view and my view regarding this road and that road. I think we have all to go deeper to the side of the soul. And that's my request to young and old, let's focus on this part. Which, very frankly, I feel, is not sufficient. It's there, I know. Savitri Bhavan is doing some other centers at home. But with this population, I think it's time that we focus on the other side. The vision, Shurabhinda studies, mother studies and have a group or a center where we can... And especially I would say one thing, I was telling somebody during the daytime, time, that when there are these newcomers are coming, do they have sufficient idea where they are coming? Or is it a green city, a renewable city, it's a beautiful place, it's away? Is it like we are coming for an outer road away? So I think this is where your entry group or whoever it is, do you ever ask the question, have you read Shri Mother? How much? What is your understanding? What is your vision? You just say, why have you come? Do you have enough money? Do you have places desire and all that? I think it's time that we, whatever you call 53 years or 72 years, not matter. But when you are taking people, let's not be enthusiastic and say, hey, you come here. I think let us be honest and say, is the vision, have you understood the vision? Or have you got, even read a little bit? I was into one of those entry group uh, uh, seminar, not entry group discussions. I was there, but I was never asked a question, have you read Shri No. Somebody gave a talk on Oralist vision and this and that, five dreams. That was re-entry. Re-entry, I was trying to re-enter Oralist. So I was asked to go in there. I said, yeah, I have been told, told by the mother to come in. No, 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 our rules are there. Okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, somebody whom in 1971 mother says you go to Oroville and he wants to come back because, you know, because mother told me to work in this education. I have been in education since then, in Oroville, in Ashram, everywhere, in Sakar, everywhere. But okay, rules are rules. You people are new to me, I am new to you. You are good. So in the re entry group, nobody asked a question about the, how much you know about Shravanadama. I said, my God, people are coming without knowing Shravanadama. And after coming in, the first thing is you have to go to this camp or that camp. So I would request the secretary and the entry group and the so many groups and groups and groups. <laughs> There's a model of groups. I don't know if you people don't know how many groups there are. It's a really labyrinth of groups here. So I'm not criticizing, but I'm experiencing this. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you my own pain. Because I've been here right from 68, I was one of those. 
verses in 28th of April, February. So I know all of it, Shapa, Shapa, I just saw it. I just saw it. I live in Pondicherry, but I have friends here, even otherwise, I have contact. And my love for Aurobel has not decreased, but it's morally increasing. And I really request that please do something to increase the vision that is the mother's soul, Shravanda's soul, and the Aurobel's soul. We have built Master Mandir, the soul of Aurobel fine. But building alone is not sufficient. You have to build this Master Mandir here. Thank you, friends. Sorry. Anandaji, I'm sure in the entry board they knew who you were, so they did not dare ask you how much you were. I request, I mean the time is running really uh, close to the lunch, so we have few more minutes, we can take few more questions. I request if uh, somebody else, I mean sorry, if reflections, yeah, yeah, yeah. any suggestions? Gitaji, anybody else? Let's, let's hear from the guest. Would you like to say something? Yes. I'm Hemant and I come from Delhi. Uh, <coughs> my association with uh, the mother and Shirobindo ashram has been from my childhood. My grand uncle was uh, very <coughs> active from the, with mother. And my sisters were part of the foundation day ceremony at the uh, foundation day. So I've been connected here, but I'm still an outsider. So <clears throat> I've been coming here, and since I've been an adult, I've been looking, I've been seeing that we don't see the town here. We don't see the city coming up. We see more like a forest all the time. And uh, I was personally only connected with building of the Matri Mandir, and uh, which came up very beautifully, and it's very satisfying. But at the same time, as an outsider, I would like to see more of the city coming up, you know, which we don't see anymore. Or, I mean, as, a, as an outsider, we don't see it so actively. So I think uh, this is somewhere the Aurobillians have to focus more. And this is the discussion that has been going on today. I'm very happy that uh, we have the new secretary and she is uh, determined to take this forward more seriously. So I think that's uh, what we are really looking at. And the other is like my personal thing is about the entry as a friend of Orwell. I think it's a bit difficult and it will make it a bit more easy. Probably more people and more friends will join. Thank you. Any more suggestion? Uh, no, we don't need to. We don't have time. Any more suggestion? That would be very nice. Yes, come. Yeah. Uh, this is just to share that uh, from the beginning, you have always been associated. Um, we come twice a month to work in the gardens or any any work that is given to us. So that and the golden chain has created this link, so that anyone who's interested can come and participate. So that's one way of looking at it. That we, have, even if we are not physically here, we're always associated. We always look forward how we can be part of it. So just keep us in the loop, and we'll always be happy to take part. I think lunch, I don't want to come between you and your lunch, but I just want to take a few minutes it's, and if I exceed the time, who's going to tell me to stop? Anu? Uma. I just want to first of all express deep gratitude to all of you, not only for your presence here today, but also for being committed to the dream, the philosophy and the direct action that Mother and Sri Aurobindo have specially given us. I think we're all very privileged that this is that special place on earth. No other country, no other geography has that possibility. And I think this is a journey. It is work in progress. 
just as any building has scaffolding and it goes on. We're all in that journey. The journey will have its little curves, accelerated paces, sometimes moments to reflect all of it. But today I want to not repeat what we said, but also express deep gratitude for many of the people who've contributed hugely. And uh, Himanji, I don't want to embarrass you, but your uncle Himad Singheji and many other donors, they've all contributed not for or of will, just as an eco-village. They've contributed for the vision of the mother, the dream of the mother, and as Tapas Jeevar is, he said, Tapanji, as, as he just read out, I think we, I don't know why we keep analyzing, there's no need for analysis and paralysis, which has been happening again and again and again and again and again. Just to quickly go through a timeline, which I think every person in Audible by now ought to know if they're just open and receptive. And I have the privilege of possibly being the youngest infant around. Maybe I'm today uh, 160 days old here. I came here on the 4th of July. I have to check on Google which day this is, how many days since then, but I presume it's less than 200 days. That would make it about six and a half months, no? So I'm a little infant, six and a half months old here in your city. While I really respect, salute all the phenomenal work individually and in collective groups, communities that people have done, I strongly feel that this is a place that has really got a lot of support from the state government, the local people of the bioregion, people as we just heard Dayananji say, there are people who gave up this land, of course took a compensation for it, but they probably became landless after that. They're all here and they gave it for a purpose. Let's every day, every moment reaffirm our commitment to this and this was the dream of the mother, this, this was clearly her vision, the charter, the mission, what we need to do. And of course, we have what it is to be a true Aurovillian. It is all there if we just read this every day and tried in our own little way to follow it. You all know the suffocating details of where this began, but just at the cost of repetition, because people seem to say there are political overtones and this and that. I think it's it's much beyond that. There is This is a project which has, it started in 1968 on the ground. The vision for it, the dream for it probably happened much beyond, even before India got independence. But physically there was a, 1968 is when it, the foundation day happened. After that, we've had a lot of freedom to manifest it. But for some reason, again, human nature, lack of harmony, erupted, brought out its ugly head, whatever be the causes. And it was the people of Auroville at that time, or the people of what eventually became, became Auroville, that approached the government finally after litigations and all of that to say that they wanted the government to intervene, which was done after the Emergency Provisions Act, later on in the Foundation Act. And after that too, we've had governing boards and I think every board has reaffirmed all of this. We had the master plan. We must again remember all the giants on whose shoulders we are all sitting today. This is not to believe that people didn't perform or people, I think they all did phenomenal work. The contributors, the donors, people here, all this beautiful that we see here, whether it's the Matra Mandir, whether it's all the units, entities, even the Greens, one of the first interaction that I had was with people for example, like people like Joss from, from Pichandrakulam. There are so many wonderful things that have happened here. There's no doubt about it. And then we also had the master plan, which again, I think we've gone through several iterations of it, but we had the resident assembly actually wanted. And that's, and I think it's imperative at this point of time that all of us collectively understand four important contours, which may seem, if you want to look at it in the right, perspective, this can give you the sky and more to really manifest and do whatever we want. What are these four sort of boundary conditions that I would say? One is the constitution of India, the laws of the land. We are here on Mother India and we are absolutely blessed 
We are indeed very privileged. Where else which other country has given this beautiful, magnanimous, magnanimous and a very generous <laughs> offer for us to be here and, and really explore the inner and outer and give us an ecosystem, a complete, a, a warmth, a place where we can really pursue our inner development and of course the outer. Similarly, the other dimension would be Mother's Charter. That is something that we have to, so another way when you say entry, we hear you completely and we know that that core essence of building is not about brick, mortar and gravel. That is one part of it. It's also about trees, but it's also most important about human beings, the core of what we are here for. And if we have forgotten or if we have some doubts, we need to rededicate ourselves. And I think that is something that we all need to do. Then we keep seeing your messages. That's important, but the inner and outer go together. We can't repeat this mistake that happened several centuries ago when people said, I'm going to get into the cave and let whatever happens. And that's the distinguishing feature, I think, of Sri Aurobindo's Integral Yoga, where we talk of both, integrating the inner and the outer. And we have a role. We have all the four facets of the divine. We have to be courageous, bold, swift. And of course, we have to be the epitome of compassion, sincerity, all those qualities, I think, which are there. But we can't say that, well, I just let things happen the way they are. Decadence and stagnation is not acceptable. So these are the two things that we understand. The third is also about the Foundation Act. We have to respect the fact that we have a Foundation Act and we had all the freedom. The Act came in 1988. How old is it today? 34 years? 35 years? We had the freedom. We still have the freedom. And we have the plan. There's no need of further there cannot be anything better than what she's given, Tuan and every expert. I'm in almost weekly conversations with none other than Dr. Balakrishna Doshi, who has got the equivalent of the Nobel Prize of Architecture, the Pritzker Prize, isn't it? And very recently he was awarded the Royal Gold Medal. I mean, he's and, and absolutely committed to the sensitivity, the ecology, the attitude to life, the way of life, because he's been a board member here. He's walked through all the communities of Auroville, he feels it, he understands it. And they, we couldn't have anybody better than him and his entire team, so they all acknowledge, if we have this feeling that our intelligence, our knowledge is superior to what the mother has given, I would beg to disagree. What she's given, in many dimensions, in many ways, is extremely contemporary, futuristic, and we should not be again doing what we call Kadamtal. We shouldn't be again in the same place you know, stagnating, talking and talking and discussing ad nauseum. Mother said, stop talking, act. We should. The fourth dimension that I feel is that, as we said, the Constitution Law of India, Mother's Charter, the Foundation Act, and the master plan after following all this process was finally adopted by a statutory notification in the year 2010. Why is it that we if we had so many objections, why is it that nobody objected to it all these years? It was accepted and every time you start implementing, if we again come with a new idea, well, I've suddenly had a revelation. And I want it to happen in the, towards the left, towards the right, meandering. This is like the story of, you know, I want to dig a well. And someone says, well, no, water here. No, no, let me dig here, let me dig here. It doesn't work that way. This city was meant to really be a beacon for the future of the entire world. And we have to solve and show how an urban city, which really, we have to have a sensitivity towards the environment that's given, but not territoriality. First of all, who, Mother has said it, land belongs to nobody. And this land actually, foundation, is the estate office, as the LNG again reminded, and all those years of hard work in the hot sun, they did to, you know, like a little sparrow collecting, and of course with the generous donation from donors who gave money for the dream to be realized that the mother had given in black and white. And it went through iterations. I mean, a lady at the age of 90, it, it's not something that came from her intellect. It was obviously far, far, far more special. It's something, and she said, I can see it. We have to at least allow it to land. Are we going to keep pushing it back? And let me also say with all humility, it's like the teething of a child. I'm sure all of you have seen it. 
when the teeth are ready to come, you can try pushing it, it's not going to stop. And I think the 150th year, we're all collectively there, if we just resolve, let us allow. You don't, I'm not even, we're not even saying all of us have to, it would be fantastic, it would be great. Matra Mandir is done by all of us collectively. And that's the reason we reached out to all of you. Can you, and we need your help. We genuinely need your help. We need help from every quarter. There's a lot of work, troubleshooting, confidence building, counseling. You heard this young lady who came and somebody, Pavitraji, you mentioned. These are moments, we all do get attached. We all have human, we are all human beings. But when that happens and one person is obstructing it, is it not our collective duty? Can we not take on that thing of, with full sensitivity, in a humane way? Can we not gently take that child or that young person to the side and explain what it is and make sure that the work goes on? Can we allow this to get stalled forever and ever and ever? And we have to be a beacon, as we said, a city in every way modern, but in every way which really allows for all these dimensions that the mother thought of. It will be a haven and, and why are 3,000 of us stopping, decelerating, preventing the entry of the other 47,000 people who are all waiting? Is it our right? As has been repeated, are we the beneficiaries? Is it for me to really have that big piece of land and make sure fence it and not allow anyone to come? This is not our land. We gave up all our possessions, maybe 30,000 kilometers away in different countries and we've all come here for a very, very holy pilgrimage. A pilgrimage which synthesizes matter and spirit. And I think it, we, we have to keep reminding ourselves and I also in a lighter way have to share, when I used to be in the government, I used to think that there's a lot of bureaucracy there. But after coming here, <laughs> stop. <laughs> so I, I call these jalebis. So any process, it goes round and round and round. May not be perfect circles. <laughs> and, and at the end of it, we don't come to a conclusion. And then it really makes me wonder if 3,000 people can't come together, but I guess that is human nature. So it's not, let's not push this under the carpet. And I think this is very, very, very important, what we're all collectively trying to do. There will be these little provocations, there will be these little questions, reflections. And again, the sequence of events, it's not that the entire team has had a series of meetings with people. And let me also say that the Prime Minister of India, this is probably historically for the first time that we've had the Honourable Prime Minister, we've had the Honourable, the then Defence Minister, the Finance Minister currently, the President of India, the Honourable Home Minister, they've all visited Auroville and given their full, because this is something that not only India, the whole world is absolutely proud of, it's something beautiful. And there is nothing in the current governing borders as well, we for the first time again have a board, which let me again assure you, there was no new agenda. I'm repeating this. What we did very painstakingly with the help of all of you, many of you, we went back to all the minutes of the last governing board meetings which were already decided. Things that earlier, so there is nothing new that has been foisted or that has emerged. All that was done is all the decisions that were already taken. It was just compiled because in any organization, whether it's a home, or a corporate organization, a civil society, NGO, when you take decisions, what do we do in the next meeting? What do we do? We follow up, action taken report. That's all we did. We said all these decisions have been taken. There have been oversight committees and undersight committees and what have you. And very good conclusions which have all been accepted. But then we just need to implement it. So we have this habit of mothers given something but then we want to put our minds and keep arguing it, arguing about it ad nauseum. If the governing boards in the past have decided something, we just have to implement it. I mean, if everybody starts saying, well, there could be a thousand ways of going from here to where the camera is, walk straight. Everything is valid. But if we keep deciding, no, 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 I have to take a 30 degrees to the right here and then move and then go there, someone says, you just have anarchy and I think. That's not even mother wanted, Roche. Jacqueline is here in spite of her poor health. We're very happy that you're here. And she shared with us that when Roger met mother, he mentioned to her that we need, she said, I wanted built in five years. 
To which Roche said, Mother, that may be difficult. Ten years. But I don't think 53 years and still chucky piecing, as we say. He's still grinding and deciding which way to go, which way not to go. So my request again, and again, I know I'm taking a little longer, but I just feel this is important because we, we want to share with you that we are very sincere. This is an assignment that I've chosen. I feel very privileged that I have an opportunity to work in the direct service of the Divine. And I think the support we are getting from every corner, every corner of the governing board, we have full support. I mean, they, they are with us telling that this is what we want to see. There's nothing new, as I said. They want to see your city. It is what you've all inherited from not just your parents, but the mother of all, in a way, universal mother. She's given you something which is so precious, and they want to be catalysts, facilitators, enablers for you to realize it boldly and swiftly. And we are at your service, and that, that was my first message to you, if you remember. I said, I'm a plumber, and I added, I'm a master plumber. So if there's some choking here and there, my job is to facilitate, help you, remove all those clogs, obstructions, and I'm committed to that. I'm beside you, behind you, with you. And so is the entire, I mean, all of us are with you, but the initiatives you have to take, and therefore we agree with you, Pastor, and all of you, that we need to solve these issues. But we need your help for that as well. We can't have a set of people, however good the intentions. I know we are all wonderful people, and I love everybody. Even the other day, we were at the youth center. We, Uma, we were there together, and whether it was Johnny, and, and we have tremendous respect for everybody. I think there's, this is nothing like us and them. Luxury. We are all, we are all one. We are all children of the mother. But at the same time, even your, in your own home, when there is something you want to do, and if the child, you have to very gently, very patiently, but restrain the child. And that's what we tried on December 4th, when we had the clear mandate again, for the, for the nth time, because we also have letters, you know, there, there's enough documentation again and again, which have been recorded with signatures, that the right of way the crown has to be built. So on 4th of December again, then it was decided, because there were letters given, and it's not that this work order or letter has not been given, it's been given, I think, a, a very large number of times. And again, even after my joining here in Auroville, without exaggeration, I carry my diary with me, I have all the names, the dates, who are the people we met, Toby is also witness to most of them. I've had more than five, zero, fifty, meetings with all the concerned people. So if you feel that we've not had discussions, I don't agree. And this is at my level. I think the, the kind of meetings that TDC has had, and for the first time we have teams, which again with her grace, are aligned on taking things forward. And are we not able to digest that? And I also want to appeal to all of you that when there is a team trying to do that, the least we can do collectively is to stand by them support them. Even if it means you have to defend it with your life. If there's something you believe in, you've come here, you've relocated, you're here, we have to defend it. And then a lot of times it's not violence that's going to lead to it. So I want to repeat, when we started this work on 4th December morning, 9 o'clock, it was in broad daylight, the JCBs were there and there was a question by Swaha, is she there? I want, to, I want to now also respond, because this is the time for it, the questions for the ANG, we, we didn't want to. If you have this piece of cloth, I'm taking Uma's example, her own, right? Or if you had the cloth from which this beautiful garment is made, how would you cut it, Swaha? Would you use your fingers to tear it? You would need a pair of scissors, Uma. And so if you need to clear the earth, anywhere, if there's any road happening or if there is any pathway to be cleared, right of way to be done, anywhere in the world, we would have to use JCBs. JCBs are not in any way violent. They're just machines that, and I've been using JCBs even as a magistrate much earlier in this. So it's not something new, it's not a new modern advancement. I think if, if we are uh, not informed of it, my request is, I can understand that, but this is not as if JCBs are some instruments of weapons of mass destruction. They're not. The JCBs are earth-moving equipment which you use to clear the path. So that's what was used. When the JCBs were used, we saw something which was very dis disenchanting, which, which was a little heart-wrenching. Found that 
people who ought to have allowed. This is first of all not land of anybody's ownership. Let me repeat. The land, who owns the land? All of us, it's collectivity and it's actually vested in the foundation, technically. We are not talking legalities or technicalities, but factually that's right. And even if you have a road near Oro or Chaudhanji, please tell me, you had a road which the government of Tamil Nadu constructed and there are many such roads. Did they, did they not have JCBs or whatever? I'm sure wherever there are roads, it happens. So here when the JCBs went, because we have full freedom, we respect that freedom. Freedom in many dimensions is good. It doesn't mean I take all my vulnerable young children, push them, pull them, make them sit on the JCB. That's not accepted. That's not on. And somebody has to stand up and say this is not on. If we are so shy, so scared of being unpopular, you're not, you've not come here for popularity, even if there's peer pressure. I think you need people to be, you're all willing servitors of divine consciousness, translated as truth. I think we have to, and I really appreciate the stand of some of our working committee members, the ATDC, we keep saying that they keep getting tomatoes and eggs, and then some of them add that they are organic tomatoes, so slightly better off. <laughs> organic tomatoes and organic eggs, because it's from Oroville. But it needs courage. I mean, if, if, you, if you want to go and sit in our warm comforts of home and twiddle our thumbs and do nothing and hatch our chairs, I'm not here for that. And I don't think any of us is here. We're all committed to this work and we should do what we can. It may be one step at a time, but we have to do what we have to do. So this happened in the morning of 4th of December, where the whole thing, with a lot of melodrama, emotions, sensitivity is one thing, but if you keep doing this time and again, it's like the story of wolf. If you keep doing this repeatedly, then I think the sensitivity or the concern you have also somewhere gets numbed. After having 60 meetings, 60 and less, 50 at my level, I'm sure you had more than 10, 20, Toby, at the site, we've sat for eight hours, we did the groundwork in the same building till from six in the morning till six in the evening, 12 hours, and then at youth center for I think four or five hours. Even we all held hands to say that this is how. So there's no, I would say, I'm satisfied. Even though I'm the newest entry here, and as a person who's charged with this duty, I'm fully satisfied that we have not left any stone unturned to communicate what has to be done and certain things are a non-negotiable. Flexibility doesn't come in every little thing. If there's a plan which mother has given, which is approved, it is not, that aspect of it is non-negotiable. But within this, there's infinite degrees of freedom. Do we realize that? Within that, if you have this room, for example, given to you, now how do I change the look and feel of it, the texture of it. There's, there's a lot of place where we can all definitely focus and offer, harness our energies. But if we put our energies on destroying ideas and saying this is, I'm, I'm afraid we've done that for too long and I don't think that's a very cool way of doing things. We can fool some people sometime, but if you think we want to do that all the time, um, I'm not sure we're, we're really being true, honest and audible is not for people like that. If I'm being blunt, please pardon me. And then, it was suggested by the police also, not in a, in a very positive way, that you know, these are not, and when we do roads, etc., in the government outside, there are many times when you have habitations, you have houses, homes of really poor people, there are eight people living in that place also sometimes, which has to be given up. Of course, they're given alternative land. And there too, we do it with sensitivity. But here, there was no house of that kind. And even if there were, this was all unauthorized construction. Very well, people knew that this is where the crown is coming. And yet, for some reason, maybe we were a little misinformed, ill-informed, or whatever. And there are people, and I really appreciate some of the people of Auroville who have also confessed, Uma, why and how this happened. And I think that's also a very beautiful space that we are all opening up. This is not to point fingers at anybody. I think I, some of us who listening to this understand what I'm saying. And, and we appreciate that very beautiful way of acknowledging that, well, we did this. It was a little not very correct on our part. And, and we have to be absolutely compassionate, accepting, forgiving, 
because we have to, that's what we are all trying to do here in this experiment, there's no room for being judgmental about others, but so it was suggested that in the evenings, because there are no homes, instead of people throwing themselves at the JCBs, why don't we cordon off the entries to these locations and we complete the work, because the work completion is something which is mandated. And the Foundation Act, I would request all of us to read it, it says that the governing board will not only, based on the recommendations of the RA President Assembly, finalize the master plan, which was done with 90%, but it will also, it shall ensure the implementation. So it's not may and may, it is shall and ensure. Ensure itself has a, and so it's a double bold and iterix to say that the governing board shall ensure the implementation of the master plan. And that's what is our duty. We're doing our duty. And we need your support. We need your help. We don't want to get the next day when this was again said that, well, we were all to go there, but why do you need to come there in the dead of the night? You've been told of this before, you've had discussions again and again and again, but still, we thought the next day we do not get police, but we thought we'd get some young volunteers from the bioregion to come and help. We reached out to a few local people to say, can we have your help? And I've watched the videos. When there is any, sometimes even a person, if there is a dignitary, you have something called a human cotton. You know what is a human cotton? For example, if all of us were to hold hands like this, and the person is here, there's a security set of people who hold hands and cotton that person. Because there would be people wanting to jump, take a selfie with her or him. You know the celebrities have this? So we thought here the JCB is the celebrity because you have to get the work done. And we had a human cordon of these young people from the bioregion and we were absolutely told to behave with complete restraint, respect, dignity and hold their hands and not... But again, we had people pushing through them, jumping on the JCB. We have record of all of this. And then if you have the audacity to call them gundas, these are the people who gave us land, we live with them. I think that's not on. If we have this sense of superiority that, you know, I am civilized and these are Gundas, I think we need to revisit that question. We're all children of God. And, and I think the first thing we need to learn is humility, mutual respect. Having said that, we then continued again because there's this feeling that we needed to have more discussions. We had a meeting again with Paul. Sri Vatsa Uma was also there in the Matru Mandir with the youth centre and it was agreed. The youth agreed that they would themselves clear it, also started their work. And they also wanted a little commitment from us which was immediately given to them by email, written, signed and yet the next morning I think the same story keeps repeating across time, across space. So the same thing happened in the morning again. They were sort of convinced, I don't know, but there were people present. I have all the evidence. I don't want to, they were told to not to give in to this and accept it, which is why again they were in a state of confusion. So is this what we're doing with our youth? Should we be manipulating? So then again it was decided after giving waiting sufficiently to now go ahead with it, which is what was done. There is a stay from the Green Tribunal, the matter is subjudice, so I would not like to talk about it now. But we should collectively commit ourselves to building the city. And today to wind up, I'm extremely happy that you're all here in such big numbers. It's not about the physical numbers that we're seeing, but your presence. And I would really want to thank all the members of the Golden Chain, including Srimoy, for making all this happen. Uh, and I would also like Srijitta to read out something that Bharti Ben has suggested we should read out. So I'll request you or maybe Bharti Ben to come and read out so that we're all, it's all about harmony. We have to stay together. And if somebody doesn't believe in this, there are other places. If you want to build a golf course here, you can go to maybe the next district and buy a piece of land. If you want to build an apparel park, that's possible. If you want to build an eco-forest, an eco-village, that's possible. And here there's enough scope to do everything that we want to do. But there is a place for everything and everything in place. If I have a design of a house, there's a kitchen, somebody insists I'm going to build the toilet there or build the kitchen in the living room, that is not acceptable. And I think we must respect this, rather than doing things in a bit of a haphazard manner. So again, I want to thank all of you for being here. And it's not just meeting, sharing, eating, 
and going away. We are very happy you are here, but we really would like, and I think some of you, Papiji, as you said, if you can all suggest or share with us what is it that you would like to contribute. We need a lot of help in terms of technical implementation. I mean, there is a plan and we need to implement it. We want to do it all together with our hands, with our hearts, with our heads together. And it would, wouldn't it be a great thing if one, this is something that Joss has been repeatedly telling me, can we have not all the young children, elders, planting trees together? Can we not all do it? Luigi, we spoke about it, we're all coming together. We have to. And there may be, I mean, I understand, we may be attached to different points, a few different things. But sometimes it's in letting go that something far more beautiful, when you give up, I think, what you get in return, I'm sure you're all the true sadhaks who've come here. I mean, we, we still are not in the space. I think what you get in return is probably far more special. There, there's no comparison that way. So I think if we all can, and the bioregion too, I think all of us, there's, there's no distinction that, you know, he is not allowed, she's not. Let us all collective, we're all children of one mother, but in a disciplined, in a proper, planned way, if we all do our bit to realize this, I think it will be the best collective offering, consecration to Mother and Sri Aurobindo. And on this 150th year, we're very close to it, very close to it. The choice is ours. As I said, I'm here with you, beside you, behind you. But the initiative has to be taken by all of you, each one of you, young, old, there's nothing, you're all unending youths. But I think what is needed is a different set of, a wide range of skills. Technical skills, human skills, harmonizing skills, music. Rapanda, one of the things I requested was, can we all not have music? Also as an integrator, mother never thought of a very fragmented personality. Music, art, culture, can, or we is full of all of that, food. Can all that not become a part of this process? Adhiji, the chanting. Can, can we all not contribute? And, and I'm not saying, that, and again, this whole thing of violence being inflicted, I would like to very strongly say there was no violence. On the contrary, there was definitely an attempt to restrain, and there have been instances of some of our police officers of the state who have been very badly, their dresses have been torn, all that has happened. But I think in a very, very beautiful gesture of forgiving, they have not filed any complaint. There are many of our people who've taken bucketfuls or probably tonnefuls of abuses, scratches, all of it. It's okay, that's a part of our karma. We all, if you, if you look at what all we're getting, getting served, not just tomatoes and um, eggs, but probably uh, mouthfuls of many things which may seem very hurtful, but if we get hurt by it, that means we are not on the path. So we have to be clear, it's like all of us doing our dharma, our karma, as long as we do it with full faith, and with that sense of, I'm not doing it, it is she who's doing it. And we're just tiny squirrels, tiny coolies in this. And it's a privilege that we're here to do our little bit. So again, thank you. And we've taken very long. Yes. It's almost 1.30. But uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. Thank you, all of you. A uh, lot of you have come from Pondi, and for you, lunch is organized here. So please stay. Uh, the people who have come from Pondi, please let them have have the lunch. Take their lunch first, and then we go after them because they have they have all to reach home and all that. So. Um, let's have lunch. We have some chanting. Sorry, before lunch. In the name of the mother, in the name of the mother, for the sake of the mother, by the power of the mother, with the strength of the mother, to all adverse, harmful being or force 
to all writers come to me of course i order to quit this place at once and forever i order to quit this place at once and forever in the name of the mother in the name of the mother for the sake of the mother for the sake of the mother by the power of the mother by the power of the mother with the strength of the mother with the strength of the mother to all adverse harmful being of force to all adverse harmful being of force i order to quit this place at once and forever i order to quit this place at once and forever Before we go out, can we have a minute of silence with what we have read, and then quietly? Please, please be seated for the moment of silence, Prabir.